What's up, you two? I know I've been going for a minute, but your boy is back back. And I know y'all was worried about it. Probably not. But just in case you did, I do appreciate your concern. No, but really though, the job got your boy in these contracting classes. They're from 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. And anybody that knows me knows I am not a morning person. I mean, your boy gets grumpy, irritated, and you do not want to see a video of me grumpy or even irritated. I mean, my girl can barely even stand me, so I know y'all would even put up with me. On top of that, last week, my AC unit just decides to break, and it was like 90 degrees the whole last week. And I work from home. I mean, I have fans all over the place, but you and me both know blowing hot air just irritates you even more. I swear to you, last week, I was sweating like it was the fourth quarter game seven of the NBA finals. It was all bad. So anyway, I know y'all ain't trying to hear all that stuff. You're like, get to the point, Charles. What are you talking about today? So this week I decided to go over how to pay your credit card off using the velocity banking method so you would pay 0% interest. Now I've made this video before and I'll link it down below in the bottom, but there have been several people that are wanting me to use a different set of numbers with a lower amount. You know, make it more relatable to their situation and that's totally fine because you already know I'm working for you and I'm working for your view. On some real stuff, if I was running for president, that would probably be my slogan. I know y'all would vote for me. So anyway, I got the whiteboard in the back, but before we get down to business, go ahead, smash the like button, make that thing turn blue, help a brother out. If you are new to the channel, just go ahead and take a few seconds, hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. It helps me reach a higher audience base. And I love everybody that takes time to hit that like button and takes time to subscribe to the channel. So let's get down to business. All right, so for this scenario, we got the power couple, never losing Nick and Nicole. And they're gonna be learning about how to velocity bank using their credit card. They got into a little situation with the pandemic and they had to charge some money on their card. So they're hitting me up like, hey, Charles, what do we do to knock out this credit card debt that we have? So we're gonna get down to business here. We have both of their incomes combined together is $2,800. Their expenses is $1,850. Their rent is $800. Combining the expenses in the rent, their total expenses together is $2,650. So that means their cash flow, which would be the difference from the income that they bring in and the expenses of $2,650, if we minus that, it would give a positive cash flow of $150. Now their credit card, they have $2,000 and they max their credit card all the way out. The minimum payment on the credit card is $100 per month. Note that this is rolled into the expenses. So part of their expenses is $100 per month minimum that they have to pay on their credit card. And their interest rate is a whopping 30% interest on that credit card. So the basics of velocity banking when you're using your credit card, we want to remember income pays credit, credit pays expenses. So we have a cute little drawing here. We got the income putting on the credit and the credit paying the expenses. This is what we want to remember when we're doing the velocity banking strategy. Income pays credit, credit pays expenses. All right, so we got our equation on the board and go ahead and get your pen and your pad out, your laptop out, whatever you need. This equation will simplify what we are trying to do. So we're gonna start at the top of the equation. We have the income of $2,000. Where are we getting $2,000? The $2,000 of income, remember they bring in 2,800 total for the month. Their credit card balance is $2,000. So they want to pay the credit card off in full. 
So they're gonna use $2,000 of their $2,800 of their income. They're gonna put that onto the credit card, put all $2,000 onto the credit card of their income. What this does, this increases your cash flow, CF, that increases your cash flow by $100. Why does it increase your cash flow by $100? Remember, the minimum payment on the credit card per month was $100. That was part of their expenses. So when we pay the credit card off in full, it doesn't become an expense anymore. And when it doesn't become an expense, we increase our cash flow by $100. And since it is not an expense, we minus $100 from expenses. So now, if we look on the board to our left, I have put the magnet up there. We have switched our expenses from 1850 and we minus $100, so now it's $17.50 for expenses because we're paying the credit card off in full. Note, the other magnet, our cash flow increased by $100. So now it's from $150 to $250. So we have increased cash flow. So this is the first part of the equation. We are putting $2,000 out of our $2,800 of income. We're putting it all on the credit card to pay it off in full. This increases our cash flow, and then this decreases our expenses. Now we're on to the next step of the equation. We're going to take $800 of our income, so that is the leftover money. Remember, income is $2,800. They're taking the $800 that's left, they're gonna pay their rent in cash. So with that $800, they're just paying the rent. They're not paying any of their expenses. Remember, we have separated them out. The expenses is $1,750, rent is $800. So this $800 is strictly going towards the rent. Nothing is going towards the expenses. This means that our expenses equal $1,750 that we have to pay. Now, how are we gonna pay these expenses? We're gonna to go to equation three. So now, since we paid our credit card in full, on step one, we have $2,000 available on our credit card. All we did was transfer money to our credit card. Now we're gonna use our credit, our credit card, and we're gonna pay all of our expenses of $1,750. When we minus 2,000 from 1750, we are left with $250. So let's look at the month of January. Our debt on our card is $1,750. The amount that we have paid on the card is $250. That is that leftover amount that was left on the card. The interest we paid was zero. Why? It's because we paid the card off in full for that month. When we put that $2,000 on there, the bank said, oh, they paid it off. And once you pay it off, you can charge it back up. They're not gonna charge you interest for that month because you already made the payment. So how we wanna think about it, remember, our income pays credit, the credit pays our expenses. All right, so we're in the month of February. So what we're gonna be doing, we gotta look at what the end of January brought us here. So our debt is at $1,750 on the credit card. So when you go to the equation and just take a look, we have switched up the numbers here. We're gonna go over the numbers, but I just wanna let you guys know we have switched them. So the income that we're getting is $1,750. Why are we drawing out $1,750? It's because our debt is $1,750 on our credit card. Because what are we trying to do? We're trying to pay our credit card off in full every single month. So what we're doing, we're transferring $1,750 of our $2,800 of our income. We put it onto that credit card. That means our credit card is paid in full. It has that $2,000 limit that we can use now. Now remember, 
This increases your cash flow by $100 because this was an expense. The credit card was an expense and it was $100 minimum payment. So now since it's not an expense anymore, we increased our cash flow by 100. Our expenses are decreased by 100. Now we're gonna go to step two. We're gonna use $1,050. That's our leftover money. If we combine 1750 with 1050, that equals $2,800. Now, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to make sure that we have a roof over our head. We're going to pay our rent. Our rent is $800. After we pay our rent, we're going to have a spare $250. So we're putting $250 on the expenses. And remember, the expenses are $1,750. If we minus that by $250, our expenses become $1,500 that we have to pay. So now we're going to step three to figure out how we're going to pay our expenses. We're going to use our credit card. Remember, we have $2,000 of capital on the credit card because we paid the $1,750 all off right there, and it made it the $2,000 that we can use. Now, the expenses is 1500. We're going to swipe our card for the 1500 on all our expenses. What's left on the card? 2000 minus 1500. We are left with 500 on the card. So now let's look at the month of February. We have a debt of 1500 on the card because we have 500 that's on a $2000 limit. And then the amount that we paid was 500. Now, what's the interest? The interest is zero. Why? It's because we pay the card off in full every time. Now, repeat with me. What did we do? We used our income to pay the credit. Then we used the credit to pay our expenses. All right, so we're on the month of March. I know you guys are getting the hang of it, but we're going to stick in there and we're going to do every single month because I'm going to drill it into your head. So for the month of March, we got to look at what happened at the end of February. So the debt that's on our credit card is $1,500. So when we go to equation one, we're going to pull out $1,500 of our monthly income. The monthly income, remember, is $2,800 per month. We're going to pull out $1,500 we paying that credit card off in full. So that reduces all the interest. That means that they're not going to charge us any interest. When we put that $1,500 on the credit card, we have a $2,000 available balance on our credit card because we paid it off in full. What does this do? This increases the cash flow by $100 because the credit card is no longer an expense anymore. We're pretty much using it like our bank account. We put the money in there, we transfer it in there, and we take it out, right? So since the cash flow increased by $100, that means our expenses decreased by $100. So now we're going to step two. So we're going to use the remainder of our income of the $2,800. Since we pulled $1,500 out, we got $1,300 left. What are we first going to do? Keep that roof over our head. We're going to pay the rent, which is $800. What's left over out of that $1,300, $1,300 minus $800, we're going to have $500. And we're going to put those $500 all on the expenses. Now, since the expenses are $1,750, we minus $500 from that, we have $1,250 in expenses. So how are we going to pay expenses? We're going to step three. So the credit card... We have a $2,000 limit on the credit card. We're going to use $1,250 just to pay our expenses off for the month using our credit card. What's left over on the credit card? $750. So let's look at, at March now. So March, we have a debt of $1,250. So we're, we're paying that thing down. So the debt on the card is $1,250. The amount that we paid is $750. And the interest that they charged us is still a big fat zero because we're paying it off in full. 
Again, income pays credit, credit pays expenses. That's all we doing. All right, now we're in the month of April. I know we're getting a routine, but hey, stick in there with me. We're gonna go over all this. All right, so for April, we gotta look at what ended for the end of March. So our debt was 1250. So what are we pulling out? We pulling out 1250 of our income. Remember our income is 2800. We pulling out 1250. We're gonna pay that, pay our credit card all the way off. This reduces the interest to zero. Since we paid it off, they're not gonna charge us any interest. I just wanna keep on reiterating that because I keep getting questions about that. Since we paid the balance off in full, there's 0% interest charge. Now, since we paid it off in full, it increases our cash flow, like we already know, because it's not an expense anymore, and it decreases our expense by 100. So now we go on to step two. We're just gonna be using the remainder of our $2,800 income. So 2,800 minus the 1,250, we got 1,550 of cash income that we got going in. First thing we gonna do, of course, keep the roof over your head. We gotta pay the rent. The rent is only $800. So once we pay that rent, we got $750 left out of this $1,550. That's what we're using that out of. So we would have $750 left. Now remember our expenses is $1,750 every single month. If we put $750 on there, our expenses is just $1,000. Now, how are we gonna pay our expenses? We already know we're moving to equation three. So our credit card, since we paid it in full, we got $2,000 of available money that we can play with. We're only gonna use $1,000 out of that credit card that was paid in full to avoid the interest. And once we take $1,000 out of that, there's $1,000 left on the credit card for the month. So let's look at April and see what it has left us here. So in April, our debt is $1,000 and the amount that we pay is $1,000. So we're halfway there, it's month four and we have not paid any interest on this credit card. This is beautiful. All right, we in month way, man, we almost there. We almost there. So when we're looking at May, we gotta see what has ended for April. So April, the end of April, our debt was $1,000. So what we pulling out of our $2,800 of income, we pulling out $1,000. You know we pulling out 1,000. What are we doing with that 1,000? We are paying off our credit card of that $1,000 balance. This pays it in full, which means that there is 0% interest charged. And when there's 0% interest charged, that's always good, right? Now this increases our cash flow because the credit card is no longer an expense. And remember, the minimum payment was $100 per month, but we're paying it off in full, it's not an expense. So it increases our cash flow by 100 and it decreases our expenses by 100. So our total expenses is 1750 instead of 1850. We remember that. So we're going to equation number two, line number two here. So we're just taking the rest of our income since we have $2,800 together, Nick and Nicole, they used $1,000, so they got $1,800 left in their cash. First thing, keep the roof over the head. We all know that. You're gonna pay our rent. The rent's only $800. And then we're gonna use, so $1,800 minus $800, we have $1,000 left. We're gonna use that $1,000 on our expenses, on our $1,700 and $50 worth of expenses. Once we put $1,000 on that, we only got $750 of expenses to pay for the end of the month. What are we gonna do? We on line number three. So our credit card, we got $2,000 of available cash into our credit card. We're only gonna pay $750 because that's what our expenses are. And then what's left on the card? We have $1,250 left on our credit card. So the month of May is looking exactly like this. Our debt is $750 and then the amount paid is $1,250. All right, so we in the month of June. 
I know paying off debt can take a long time. It's a long process, but I appreciate you guys for sticking in there. Let's get it in. So for June, remember, we have to look at what our debt was for the end of May. And that was $750 of our debt. So income wise, out of the 2,800, we're taking $750. And what are we doing? We already know what we're doing. We paying the credit card off in full. It only got $750 on there. So we're taking our 750, putting it onto that credit card. What this does, it increases our cash flow by $100 and decreases our expenses by $100. Now, we on step two. Step two, we're just gonna be using the remainder income like we know. So if we get $2,800 and we use 750, we got $2,050 of cash that we got. First thing we doing, keep the roof over your family's head. We got to. Rent $800, we gotta dish out that $800 for rent. And then what we have left over out of the 2,050 minus 800, we got $1,250. What are we putting that on? We putting that on our expenses, our monthly expenses, 1,250. Remember, monthly expenses is $1,750 for the month. And we take $1,250, we put that on there. That means our expenses that's left is $500. So now we go on to step three. We paid our credit card off in full. That means we avoided that interest, a big fat zero for the interest, right? We got a $2,000 credit limit because we paid it in full. So now we're gonna use our credit card. We're gonna pay the rest of our expenses, the $500. Now what's left on our credit card? $1,500. Now again, what are we doing? It should be ingrained into your head. Income pays credit, credit pays expenses. So let's look and see what we have left over for the month of June. So June is looking like we got $500 left in debt for our credit card. We paid, we paid $1,500 on our credit card and the interest that we paid, a big fast zero. We looking good. We are looking mighty good. All right, we almost at the end of the road. We in month of July. So we already know what we are doing, but we just gonna go through the baby steps, go through the baby steps. So for July, we have to look at what our debt was at the end of June, which was $500 in debt for our credit card. So we're gonna be pulling $500 out of our income. Remember our income's $2,800. So we're gonna pull 500, we're gonna pay off the credit card. When we pay it off, what does that do? It reduces the interest to a big fat zero. So we're not paying any interest on the credit card because we paid that balance in full for the month. Now that increases our cash flow because our credit card was an expense. And then it decreases our expenses by $100. So now we're on to step two. We're gonna take the rest of our income since we only use 500 out of the 28, we got 2,300 in cash that we come you know, from work, it drops in, drops in weekly, monthly, however it drops in. We're gonna pay our rent. We gotta keep the roof over our head, over our family's head. And the rent's only $800. So 2,300 minus 800, we still got $1,500 in our cash and we're gonna be paying our expenses. Our expenses is $1,750, remember? So when we pay $1,500 on that $1,750, we're left with $250 of expenses. Now how are we gonna be paying our expenses? We already know how we are gonna be paying. We are gonna go to step three. So our credit card, it has $2,000 that we can use of available cash because we pay it in full every single month, right? Expense is only $250, but we're gonna use $250 on our credit card. This leaves the credit card balance at $1,750. So let's look at the month of July. We still have not paid any interest and that's awesome. So July is looking like we got $250 of debt on our credit card and we paid $1,750 onto the credit card. So we got one more month 
So hang in there with me one more month. All right, we in the home stretch. The month of August. Although we come to the end of the road. All right, now I know you guys are like, Charles, that is not our friend. I am not crying over that. Get this thing over it. All right, so we're we, we going to get it over with. So we're in the month of August. Now we got to look at our debt ending in the month of July. So that was $250 that we have on the card in debt. So what are we doing? Our income is $2,800. We're going to take $250 of that. We're going to go ahead, pay that credit card off in full. That means since we paid it in full, 0% interest. Boom. This increases our cash flow by 100 and it decreases our expenses by $100. Now we're moving on to step two. Our income is $2,550 that we have. Because remember, it was $2,800. We had to use $250 to pay off the card. So we got $2,550 left. First thing we're going to do, everybody knows that the rent get paid first. You got to have a roof over your head. So the rent getting paid is $800. Now, when we minus $800 from $2,550, what do we get? We get $1,750. Hmm, that seems like enough to pay off our expenses of $1,750. So that means when we put $1,750 on $1,750, our expenses is zero. So this is a step that y'all been waiting for. This is the moment y'all been waiting for. We go to this step, our credit card, it has $2,000 of available credit. It's paid in full. Our expenses are zero. So we ain't even gotta use our credit card. Our expenses is up, which makes what's left on the credit card $2,000. So Nick and Nicole, like I said, they never lose. They didn't pay no interest. They follow the velocity banking steps and now they are debt free off of their credit card. Now, one last time, what do we do for the velocity banking concept when we are paying off our credit card? It is income pays credit, credit pays expenses. Now, I know on some of my other videos, I went through more advanced steps, but again, this is a basic 101. Again, things may not work out perfect like this where you would be paying 0% every single time in interest, let's say that the credit card debt was $4,000, you would still be using this same concept to minimize the interest that you're paying. So since you're putting all your money onto the credit card, that means that they're gonna charge you less interest. So even if it was $4,000, you would use that same concept, which is income pays credit, credit pays expenses. And man, for the people that have stuck around, you guys are awesome. What I want you guys to do is go ahead and share this with one or two friends and change their mind. You might even save their life for real. I mean, who wouldn't want to pay 0% interest when you're repaying your credit card? So go ahead and share that to the masses. We are trying to get everybody financially educated and I appreciate it. Last thing too, if you have not done so, go ahead, hit that like button, make that thing turn blue. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I mean, you watch the whole thing, you might as well just hit that subscribe button for our brother. Now we will be back with more Velocity Banking videos. Um, we'll get a little bit more complicated. If you guys want me to do another scenario of this, we can definitely do that. It's always good to go back to the 101s and things of that nature. So go ahead and drop a comment and tell me what you guys want me to be providing in the financial videos here. So I'll catch you guys later. Hope you enjoy your weekend. Peace out.